Jailbreaking the game console wasn't all that hard. I'd been hacking video game systems and phones since I was a teenager, so this brand new one wasn't too bad. Even if it was being touted as the greatest breakthrough in game technology ever, it was still based on everything that had come before it. That's not to say that it wasn't awesome. I mean, you didn't even need a television, a phone, or any kind of screen at all. Your mind was the screen. All you had to do was wear the special headgear, which would transmit signals to your brain. Then you could just close your eyes to play. And the best part was, the signals worked with your brain to create customization. So if you were playing one of the GTA-like games that took place in a city, the city would look like whatever you imagined. But you wouldn't have to work hard to imagine it. The console did the heavy lifting for you. And since it was all taking place in your mind, you didn't need some kind of crazy setup with a treadmill and gloves. When you were in the game and you moved your arm, it really felt like you moved your arm, even though you were just sitting there in the real world, not moving at all. But if the virtual world was exactly like the real world, no one would play it, which was why there was no pain. When your character was hit or shot or something, you'd feel a full body vibration, but you wouldn't feel pain. Talk about mind blowing. But even the most advanced technology gets old after a while. The X station hadn't even been out for six months yet, but I'd already grown bored with it. So when I heard about how you could jailbreak the system and use it to connect to games on the dark web, I jumped at the chance. I had heard about dark web games that were, let's just say a little more adult than the ones officially available for the X station. There was one in particular that everyone was raving about. It was called Kill Squad. I tried to ask my friend Ellie about it. She was one of the people who recommended it, but she said there was no explaining it. I just had to try it. So as I finished the adjustments to the system, I put the headset on and closed my eyes. Using my hands in the virtual world, I navigated to the dark web game marketplace Ellie had told me about. I didn't even have to do a search. Kill Squad was right there in the number one spot, and it was completely free which I thought was a little strange. Maybe there would be a paywall once you got a quarter of the way through the game or something. Shrugging, I selected the game. A thousand needles drove into my brain. The virtual world disappeared as my vision turned bright red with pain. My back arched, spine crackling as I convulsed breathlessly. But the turmoil was just getting started. What I felt next was a violation so elemental and gut-wrenching that there were no words to do it justice. It was an invasion. I felt my essence, who I was inside, being shoved down, compacted, and moved aside like clutter in a hoarder's house. Then there was nothing. I awoke in my chair, jumping up and ripping the X station console off my head. My skull pounded with residual pain from the ordeal I'd gone through. I checked the time. I'd been unconscious for two hours. My hands were greasy for some reason. I looked at them as I stood up and walked out of my room. As I got near the kitchen, I smelled pizza. There was a half-eaten pizza on my kitchen table. It was from a company I never used because I hated their soggy crust and bland toppings. But it was still warm. I couldn't remember ordering it, but it was clearly me. My hands were greasy from the meal and I lived alone. No one else could have ordered it. Getting to the sink, I turned the water on to wash my hands. Oops, a voice said from right behind me. I whipped around, but there was no one there. Yeah, sorry, the man's voice said, again from behind me. Forgot to wash our hands. I looked around frantically, searching for a speaker placed somewhere. I even reached my half-wet, half-greasy hands up to my ears to verify I wasn't wearing earbuds. What is this? I said. This, my friend, is the new normal, the man said. He sounded happy, almost giddy. What are you talking about? How the f are you talking to my goddamn head? Whoa, calm down there, buddy. That's no way to treat a house guest, is it? You're going to have to get used to it. I'm not going anywhere, at least not for a while. Oh, and I will be taking over our body once in a while when I deem it necessary. I looked down at the running faucet. The game. Kill Squad. Ding, ding, ding. He's not a total idiot. Oh, 
How is this possible? Not that hard to make a digital copy of your consciousness if you have the resources. Which I do. From there, you can figure out the rest. Some idiot tries to play an illegal game on the dark web wearing the X-Station console and BAM! I'm in there like bedbugs, baby. As the reality of my situation dawned on me, I fell to my knees in front of the sink. How many? How many people have you invaded? Oh, you don't want to know. You really don't. My friend, the one who told me about the game. Ellie, yeah. That was me telling you about the game with her body. Pretty good, right? That's why the game is so popular. It's all me. I lunged up and grabbed a knife from the knife block and brought it toward my neck, but something stopped my hand. I tried to jam the blade into my throat, but it just wouldn't work. We can't have that, the man said. Not until I've had my fun. Besides, you think I would allow myself to feel your pain? That would be pretty stupid. I can feel all the good sensations your body experiences, but not the bad ones. Kind of like playing a game with the X-Station. Jesus Christ, I said. Close enough. <laughs>"'Can I help you with that?' the man asked while I was doing tricep pushdowns at the gym. I looked over my shoulder at him. "'Uh, no, I'm good.' He was an older guy, maybe mid-fifties, with the kind of reddish skin people with fair skin get from many years of regular sun exposure. "'You sure?' he said, stepping closer and crowding me toward the machine. "'Your form is a little off.' I knew my form was pretty good. There was a giant mirror on the wall nearby allowing me to see elbow placement and everything. No, I said, shoving my anger down. Okay, the guy said, shrugging in his tank top. I turned back to my exercise, but then I felt the man quickly touch my back. I dropped the cable, causing the weights to clank down and turned around. What's your problem? I said. The guy said nothing. He just smiled at me as he turned and walked away. Other people nearby were staring at me thanks to my outburst. With my face flush with anger, I decided to cut my workout short. As I was leaving the gym, I saw the creepy guy watching me. I could still feel where he touched me, like an itchy spot on my back. But it hadn't been just a simple touch. It felt like he'd drawn a small design there with his finger. Weird. I couldn't remember ever seeing the guy in the gym before, but I didn't pay much attention to other people while I was working out. Getting to the bus stop, I glanced back toward the gym to see if the guy was following me. As far as I could tell, he wasn't. There were a couple of other people at the stop with me, sitting on the bench under the shelter. I leaned against the side of the shelter and pulled my phone out. When a car pulled up in front of me, I glanced up to see what was happening. A woman with stringy blonde hair leaned out the window of the sedan with a black cup in her hand. Before I could react, she tossed the contents of the cup in my face just before the car sped off. The powder that splashed over me stuck to my sweaty skin. I inhaled some of it, and it tasted foul, like several pieces of rotten fruit had been dried and ground up. There was also a salty undertone to it as I spit it out of my mouth and brushed it off my face and upper arms. What the f did I do? I shouted after the long gone car. The other people at the stop looked at me with wide, pitying eyes. I got the powder off as best I could, then moved behind the shelter so I wouldn't be such an easy target. I had no idea what I'd done to deserve all the weird that was happening to me, but it was starting to piss me off. And then the birds came. It was one crow at first. It landed nearby and hopped toward me, cawing as it turned its head this way and that, looking up at me. off, I said, kicking out at the thing. I'm not in the mood. The crow jumped back, but it didn't leave. Pretty soon, it was joined by two others and a raven. They stood around me at a safe distance, cawing and croaking. As I looked at these birds who were so intent on me, I started to feel like something was really wrong. Three weird things all in a row. It couldn't be a coincidence. Then I saw the bus approaching and I gave a sigh of relief kicking at the birds to make them get away while I rushed to board the bus in front of everyone else. The first five minutes of the ride were great, but when we came to a stoplight, 
the four birds landed on the roof of an SUV next to the bus, and they all stared at me. My phone chimed, making me jump in my seat. There was a message from a number I didn't recognize. Get off the bus, it said. I looked around for anyone I recognized, but I was surrounded by strangers. It's going to crash. They're going to kill you so the ritual can be completed. They need you to die along with at least three others. I shook my head, smiling grimly. This is some kind of prank, I whispered. It's not a prank, the next message said. Then my phone started downloading something called a Tor browser on its own. I scrambled, pressing buttons, trying to cancel the download, but nothing worked. I couldn't even turn off my phone. I'd been hacked. When the download was finished, the Tor browser popped up and went to some weird dot .onion website. It was the dark web, I realized. I had heard about it, but never visited. The page that filled my phone screen sent ice through my veins. There was a picture of me, along with all sorts of personal information. But the most prominent bit of information was the fact that I died for about 30 seconds when I was born. Get off the bus, the message said. Now! I lunged out of my seat and ran toward the driver. Let me off! I screamed. Let me off the bus! Sir, the next stop is coming up. Now! I screamed. Now, goddammit! The bus driver slammed on the brakes, nearly causing me to smash into the windshield. He opened the door and said, You're never coming back on my bus, you hear me? I didn't acknowledge him. I just got off and stood on the sidewalk as the bus pulled away. I watched it go. When it was halfway across the next intersection on a green light, a garbage truck came screaming from the left and smashed into the bus right next to where I'd been sitting. My mouth dropped open as the bus essentially folded in half around the garbage truck. My phone chimed again with a message, run. So that's what I did. Let's hope these don't kill me, I say just before popping one of the small pink pills into my mouth and swallowing it with a gulp of water. But even if it doesn't kill me outright, I still need it to help me stay alive. Buying prescription drugs off the dark web is risky business. First of all, it's illegal. Second, you don't really know if you're getting the right drugs. They may look like the right ones, but they could be made of anything. But when you're like me, and your life-saving drugs cost nearly $2,000 a month through legitimate avenues, then you don't really have much of a choice. The drug I take, Logexaprine, is only made by two companies, and they both charge around the same price for them, even though it only costs them a couple of dollars to manufacture each pill. I have good insurance, and the pills still cost nearly $35 a piece. But that's big pharma for you, profiting off people's misery. So when there's a black market to be found on the dark web where you can get the pills for as little as $5 a piece, it's a no-brainer to give it a try. I'm guessing they get the pills from Canada or Mexico, where they're actually available for a reasonable price. Wherever they come from, I've been taking the dark web pills for over a year. For a long time, it had been going fine, until about a week ago. I got on the dark web using my Tor browser. Then I punched in the dot .onion address of the dark website I've been buying the pills through, and I got the onion site not found error page. I tried a few different things, and it looked like the site was down for good. So I had to try another site. And now, as the pill I just swallowed does its thing in my stomach, there's nothing to do but wait. I sit back on my couch and watch some television before I head to bed for the night. About an hour passes, and I don't really feel anything, which is good. It's not the kind of pill that has immediate physical effects. It's the kind that works in the background to keep my body functioning properly. So hopefully, that's what it's doing. I'll know for sure after a couple days of taking them. Deciding to watch another episode of the show, I let the autoplay function do its thing. And about five minutes into the new show, I start to feel a tingling in my legs. At first, it feels like they're falling asleep. So I adjust them, pulling them up onto the coffee table. That's when the pain starts. I'm wearing shorts, and in the dim blue glow from the television, I see that there are dozens of bugs crawling up my lower legs. Spiders, beetles, ants, and even a cockroach or two. Shouting, I jump up from the couch and bat at my legs. A couple of the spiders bite me again before I can get them off. 
I run over and flip on the lights in the living room as the bugs scurry away into the dark cracks and crevices under the furniture. For a moment, I think I might have dreamed the whole thing, but then I look down at my lower legs and see the welts forming from the spider bites. What the hell was that? I say to my empty living room. It's not like I live in a bug infested house. In fact, most of the time I don't really see many bugs at all. Sure, there's a small spider here and there. I let them hang around unless I see one in my bed or something. But I've never had anything like this happen before. I shut off the TV, take my pills and water, and head to my bedroom. Maybe I'll call an exterminator tomorrow, I think as I get ready for bed. By the time I'm snuggled up under my blanket with my eyes closed, I've written the thing off as a strange coincidence. But apparently my subconscious isn't done with the incident. Because my dreams are full of bugs, I can feel them crawling all over me, thousands of them. And when they start to bite, it feels so real. Ow, I say, slapping at my face, only for my hand to come away covered in writhing insects. I suddenly realize that I'm awake. I'm lying in my bed, but it's not possible. I can't be awake. Not when the walls and the ceiling of my bedroom are covered in bugs. I turn my neck to look down, seeing that my blanket is a moving mass of black bugs Ow! I whip off the covers and see that the insects are crawling all over my skin. A scream builds in my throat as panic creates a frenzy of my thoughts. There are cockroaches the size of potato chips, massive spiders with long hairy legs, earwigs, silverfish, centipedes. Finally, the scream escapes as I jump out of bed, my feet crunching the insects, carpeting my floor. With my frenzied movements comes the biting. Some of the bites barely register, while others send tendrils of immense pain shooting through me. I run out of the room, swatting bugs off me as I go. When I get out into the hall, I throw myself down and roll around like I'm on fire, crushing the bugs with my body. Then I get up and run outside into the chilly early morning air. I turn around and look at my house. Already, some of the faster insects are coming out the front door toward me. I know it's the pill I took, some sort of dark web bug attack pills. I'll have to keep running from the bugs until it's out of my system. I'm going to have to find yet another site to buy my pills from. And it's a good bet I've been bitten by a couple of poisonous spiders. Looks like I'll be going to the hospital. I just hope whatever drugs they give me for the bites aren't stupid expensive. But who am I kidding? I'm sure they will be. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and smash that like button to get notified every time I upload a new video.